Molo San Bonani. Hello, how's it? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another episode of Vuganazo here on the Big Daddy Liberty Show. It is Friday, yes! <laughs> Goodness me, it is always a good time when we hit a glorious Friday, meaning, of course, the final episode for the week of Vuganazo. Remember, if you want to get in touch with us here on the show, it's easy peasy. Find us, of course, at our website at www.bigdaddyliberty.com. There, of course, you'll catch all our latest episodes and other content soon to come on that website is a merch store so look forward to that now with that being said all of our social media details are in the descriptors of this video whether it's on facebook up there or youtube down there so make sure you check that out with that being said enough of the jibber jabber let's get straight into the news <laughs> is there a diabolical plan to dethrone uh, Cyril Ramaphosa by the independent news group. <gasps> uh, <laughs> well, um, that would seem to be the case if this report by News24, an exclusive on News24, is anything to go by. News24 detailing how a leaked document by the fellas over at the independent news group, that's their rival newspaper group, the second largest in the country, uh, leaked a paper detailing what they called Operation Cleanse or Operation Clean or Cleanse, as is alleged is the document which saw, according to this report, a meeting by the independent group on Monday of their senior editors and political journalists. Uh, this is, of course, according to the allegations in which this meeting, they discussed effectively how to report uh, favorably in the, the direction of a rival to, that, a rival rather, to Cyril Ramaphosa at the upcoming ANC elective conference. Let me read from this particular expose, an exclusive from News24, and I'll also give you the response by the fellows over at Independent. Now, uh, News24 covers the story as follows. Now, News24 can reveal that the plan, which was titled, as I mentioned, Oper Operation Cleanza, which means cleanse or clean, was shared to senior editors and political journalists in the group, uh, which include titles such as, you know, IOL, which you uh, we've shared here on the show before, the Star up in Johannesburg, the Mercury here in Durban, Cape Argus, of course, in the Cape. This was at a confidential meeting on Monday. Authored by the Star's editor, Usifiso Mahlangu, the document is clear in its anti romaposa stance and preference for Unkosa Zana Yamini Zuma, who's, of course, the cooperative governance and traditional uh, affairs minister, a.k.a. Buffalo Bill, as we call her here on this channel. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Which, uh, to take, of course, over as leader of the governing party. Uh, you'll remember, of course, the ANC's conference is scheduled for, effectively, the 16th to the 20th, the 20th of December at Nazrek in Johannesburg. End of quote. Now, again, it is absolutely unfathomable that this media house, you know, media who, by the way, uh, in this country at least, claim to be objective and impartial and all the yada yada they sell us, it is absolutely, it boggles the mind that they would actually take a position, a stake, if you will, in the internal party politics of a, of, of a political party, whether it's a governing party or not. It's, it's just, it's weird that the people who we expect to write in an impartial way basically have a slant that they are pursuing here. Not only a slant, but are looking to influence effectively the direction of the party politics of a party. That's unacceptable and really speaks to the media bias and really what Tr Donald Trump called. They are the fake, fake, disgusting news. Yes, that's right. Fake news. Can we now expect, perhaps, that anything the independent group write about Cyril Ramaphosa or indeed the ANC has this particular slant, this particular bias? Is it fake news, as Trump uh, rightly described, the sort of trend of media and really corporate media having this overt bias? Now, I must say, 
in the interest of fairness, that uh, the uh, editor-in-chief of the independent media group, Aziz Hartley, did respond to this piece. And this is what he had to basically say uh, to it. Now, in a rather defensive uh, response, he says, the independent media, like News24 and every other media house in this country and the world over, has a, quote, editorial direction. We do not co comment on yours. That's uh, independent referring to News24. We do not comment on yours, he says. So I'm not entirely certain why you feel you have the need or right to comment on ours. Your interpretation of the plan, a private document that was leaked to you is narrow and biased. The document clearly questions whether President Ramaphosa will be the ANC's last president. This is about the ANC as a party and whether it will be the ruling party come the next election or not. Nothing more, nothing less. End of quote. Now, I do think that's a slightly disingenuous response from Hartley, uh, especially if, as being alleged by News24, the document states that it will be taking a pref preference or displaying a preference or reporting in a manner that shows a preference for Buffalo Bill. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> I mean, Unkosazana Yamini Zuma. That is the bone of contention here. There being an editorial direction is neither here nor there. Of course, uh, editors can express views on issues. It becomes a problem when editors express or newspapers express a preference on a particular issue, uh, for example, on a political issue. That makes their reporting trash. Ho oh ho! Gird your loins, prepare yourself if you live, of course, in the metropolitan area of Ekuru Leni, where, of course, your mayor. Uh, one Tanya Campbell, she's of course the at the helm of a coalition government in that part of the world. Well, she, much like the Johannesburg mayor, Umpo Palatse, will now be facing a motion of no confidence. And if Johannesburg was anything to go by, well, you can perhaps even expect a major shakeup in that part of the world. Again, throwing more fuel on the fire that suggests that these coalition governments are simply unstable and rather trashy. That is a sentiment, of course, that a lot of South Africans are beginning to hold to as uh, they look at what has been happening, of course, and uh, with Joburg being, if anything, the cherry on top that really crowned it for them insofar as can we expect coalition governments to be the norm going forward in this country? And if so, can they be a lot more stable? Right now, the, tr the track record is proving to be a dicey one in that regard. As I said, motion of no confidence being put forward in the Ekoruleni Metro. This, of course, is the write-up in EWN, which posited the following. Of course, the Ekruleni speaker, a one Raymond Ikamini, confirmed receiving the motion from the ANC uh, on Thursday. However, he said that it still needed to go through the programming committee before it was put up for a vote in council. He's quoted as saying, there's a lot of things that you need to look at. Uh, you have to check if they comply. Close quote. The ANC, of course, had requested that this vote against Campbell take place on the 26th of October, end of quote. TikTok, TikTok, therefore, a few days left until that 26th of October. Questions, of course, will be held as to whether the DA can co coalesce, bring together its coalition partners and fend it off, or will we see another messy breakup, which will result in perhaps a, uh, another toing and froing between the ANC and Action SA, where the IFP is thrown in the mix, the Patriotic Alliance is, you know, uh, Brutus in the situation, lol. Who knows what will play out, but effectively, it doesn't bode well, and it continues to not bode well for the overall picture for coalitions in this government, uh, or in this country rather. With that being said, it's funny also to see how the DA has, given the chaos around it, also put forward proposals for stabilizing coalitions. Um, they, of course, released their detailed plan in this regard, which we won't cover here. We'll probably cover in another episode of Vuganazo. All right, as is now custom on Ivoganaz, or the Friday edition in particular, we look at who is the Mumish of the week. The Mumish of the week is... 
suspended public protector Busisiwe Mkwebana. And why is she the mumish of the week? Well, she was given proper bat. Ba -ba! Hit for a six by a full bench of the Western Cape High Court, which basically told her in no uncertain terms, chick, you are still suspended. Any attempt by her to try and get back into the office, cha-ching, <laughs> them gates will be locked for her. She can just sit home, sit at home and read some books and contemplate life post perhaps being a public protector because clearly no one wants her. With that being said, she's now saying, well then, <laughs> I'm going to approach the Supreme Court of Appeal. Um, they may ha they might have a different ruling. Well, I really wish her luck in that regard. But as things look in this instance, the law is clearly on the side of those who are saying, hamba mkwebane, hamba. All right, folks, that's it for this episode of Ivuga Nazo, the Friday edition of the show. Did you like it? Let me know. Give me some feedback. I always appreciate your words of support and scorn <laughs> for those of you who are critical of the show. Remember, if you want to support the show, please do me a favor. Go to our website, um, www.bigdaddyliberty.com. Scroll to the bottom and you'll see various payment methods and you can pledge a support of 100 Rand a month. Help me build the show, people. Let us build it as we fly. With that being said, this show comes to you weekdays uh, from 7 a.m. You don't have to be up to watch me at 7 a.m., guys. <laughs> it's from 7 a.m. And of course, if you enjoyed this being the start of your day, how about you take a visit to our friends at The Daily Friend. That's at www.dailyfriend.co.za. Have them uh, cap off your news day every afternoon, every weekday. With that being said, remember you can find me on all your social media. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube in particular, do me a solid favor, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so that every Wednesday from 7 a.m. you're notified when Vuganazo is on your screens. Happy weekend, people, and Shabbat Shalom. I'll see you on Monday.